You're watching KCMI TV. Well, thank you for joining me. And uh, we're going to be taking our scripture setting today out of the book of Romans, uh, chapter 6. And um, there are, in these two verses that I'm going to read, the Lord's talking about two different times of um, basically a death, uh, a process. And um, in the sixth chapter in verse four, it says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. And uh, this scripture is really pretty self-evident in, in what it means. It just simply says that this is dealing with salvation, that when we come to Christ as a believer, that we are buried with him in baptism. And it's interesting, the wording here, he uses the word buried. And even though it's a spiritual process, our old man, this is, this is dealing with our old nature. God says that when we come to Christ, that there it's just as Christ was put in the grave, we are buried with him. When we go into baptism, we are making a confession of faith that all things are passing away and all things are becoming new. And so, uh, and it's, it's instant. Salvation is an instant thing. One moment we confess our sins and the next moment we become a new creation in Christ and, and the old nature passes away. So this is what this verse is talking about. He says that when we come to Christ in salvation, that we are buried with him with Christ. But the next verse uh, is dealing with the same process. And it says in verse five, it says, for if we have been planted together. Remember verse four, it's talking about salvation and the new man is saying that we were buried. Generally, when you bury something, that means it stays there. That's why that verse 4 is talking about when we're dealing with the old nature, that it is buried. It is not coming back up. There's no resurrection of that old nature. We are a new creation. Verse 5, it says, for we've been planted together. He doesn't pause right here. He doesn't use the word buried. He says, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. When you plant something, you're not burying it. You are putting it in the ground with the anticipation that there is something coming up out of that ground that is greater than what you planted. So verse four is talking about salvation. I believe that verse five is talking about our purpose. And oh my, that's a whole different thing. And so when he's talking to here, he says, we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. When we get saved, when we, uh, verse four, when we, when we experience verse four and that, that new nature comes in us, with that nature comes purpose. God gives you and I a purpose. The verse talks about, it, it says, many are called, few are chosen. And when you come to Christ, I believe that God immediately puts a purpose in that new creation to help advance the kingdom of the Lord. The issue is the purpose has to go through the process of death in order for it to bring forth the fullness of God's intent in your life. This is, this is why you've seen a lot, you see a lot of people over time, if you serve the Lord a long time, you'll see people who are Christians and they have great talent but they struggle to live a victorious life or there's a lot of arrogance, there's a lot of self-love. You can just, the spirit of pride and all of that emerges out of that talent. You know why? Because their purpose has never been planted with Christ 
and that when it came up out of the ground, it is a resurrection purpose. It is now controlled by the Holy Ghost. Any purpose that's never been planted in that grave will always be controlled by the flesh of a man and not the nature of God. And so uh, I, I just jotted down a few things in prayer. Uh, when you are planted, when God plants your purpose, and you know what, this is not something we do. This is something that God does. You don't bury yourself. You don't plant yourself. God does it. And my goodness, when he plants you, the first thing that happens is, you know, we talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. The, 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 the burial part or the planting part uh, is really not the most difficult, I think, phase. At least for me in my own life, it wasn't. And of course, the resurrection part is a joyous moment. I think it's in between. It's the process of being in that place to where you have been planted. And it's a dark place. Uh, it is a place where your purpose is not operating. It's a place of uncertainty. It's a place where a lot of times you don't have an understanding of what's going on. One of the things that happens is you feel like when you're there, this is the way it's always going to be. And, uh, you know, it talks about that in the likeness of that process that Christ went through. When Jesus was in the grave, it looked like his purpose was dead because all of his ministry that he had spent on the earth up until that point, that last three and a half years, the disciples that he had poured into, it looked like an abject failure. None of those men were, soon as Christ died, they fell apart. Part of it was, is that they had a purpose they had salvation, but they hadn't gone through that process either. And so when, when Christ died because they had not gone through that process coming into resurrection, their flesh dominated their call. And when Jesus was no longer around to protect them or they weren't using his authority, when he was gone, they fell apart. And so when you look at that period of time with Christ being in the grave, it looked like his purpose was dead. No, it was going through a metamorphosis. There was, there was change coming. God, every individual who has, is called of God is going to go through a night season where God is going to put you in the ground. And it looks like that what God has called you to be and to do is non-existent. Oh my, I went through that for years. And the, the the degree of purpose that is on your life determines how long you stay hit. And I will tell you this, that in that season where you don't flow in your anointing, you don't flow in your gift, doors don't open, it looks like everything is dead and impossible, God will watch over you. And you, when Jesus was in the grave, you remember that when they came, to the grave and the stone had been rolled away and they looked in, there were angels on both ends of that where Jesus lay. They had been guarding. It was, a, it was a type of the Ark of the Covenant that there were cherubims on both ends of the Ark of the Covenant where the presence of God and the mercy seat was. Christ became the Ark where the indwelling of, of God Almighty was. Angels are on both ends, but they are guarding that. When you're going through the process where God has planted you and it looks like it's over. I think of Psalms 91. He, hallelujah, he shall give his angels charge over you. That means that they have a command from God to guard you. And you don't know how many times the enemy has come in and was going to try to take you out in this process. But God has set angels around you. You know, Moses, 
when he died, it looked like his purpose was unfulfilled. He never got to go into the promised land. And yet, in the spirit, you could already see prophetically that there would come a day when he would be on the Mount of Transfiguration in Canaan land with Jesus and Elijah. And they would be there and see the glory of God and see the enemy. The Bible says this, that he disputed with Michael, the devil did, about the body of Moses. Why? He wanted to keep Moses from being on that Mount. It would keep the transfiguration from being complete. And so when, when you're in this dark time, and boy, it's a dark place. God, you don't know it, but he has angels that watch over you. And uh, <clears throat> when you are put in, in that place, what goes in is not what comes out. Uh, forgive me for just personal reference, but when uh, my prophetic ministry never started until I was, I think, around 35 years old, I'd always preached, pastored, evangelized. I just preached. I didn't know what prophetic was. And when God took me through that season where he planted me with Christ, what went in that place was a preacher. What came out of that place when resurrection happened was God gave me a prophetic mantle. But it took that season where God had to perform that. Um, one of the things, you know, if, when you put somebody in, it looks like they're in that grave, the first thing is nobody can see them. And oh my goodness, when you're going through the process, you will become invisible. People will look right past you. They won't see your call. They won't see your anointing. They won't see your purpose. And other people who have not been through the process will stand on the platform or be invited to the places of, of honor. And you're sitting there and you feel this mandate. And you know what you're feeling? You're feeling this germinating. There is something happening. That seed that's, that's a purpose that's in you is being opened up. And... God is releasing a resurrection. Anything that is buried doesn't come back to life. This is why verse 4 says baptism is about being buried because it's only dealing with the old man who needs to stay buried. Verse 5 in Romans 6 is dealing with planting. There's a huge difference. When God plants you, the first thing that happens is there is a resurrection anointing that settles down on your purpose. And that when God finishes the process, then he brings you out. From that moment on, your purpose can't die because resurrection cannot die. Resurrection is eternal. When, uh, even when Jesus was in the grave, he, he, didn't, he didn't operate. Nobody got healed when Jesus was in the tomb. Nobody was ministered to. Nobody gave their heart uh, to the Lord. Uh, there was no messages preached. Why? Because Jesus was being, he was planted in by his father that the Bible says he became the first fruit of many brethren. And when Jesus came up out of being planted, hallelujah, he is now, he has a resurrection DNA in him. It didn't matter from that moment. You don't read in the New Testament anywhere where they tried to kill him again. The devil knew. I can't touch him now. There is an aura. There is a protection. He has a different DNA. He was, the Bible talks about this. He was God in flesh for 30 years, uh, even though he was Christ. 
But the moment that he was resurrected, he received a glorified body and he ascended up into the holiest of holies in heaven, put his blood on the mercy seat, came back, has the keys to death, hell and the grave. And it's just in a few days after that, that the church is beginning to be birthed and thousands of people are coming to Christ. What was that? More happened in a few days after resurrection, seemingly. In fact, it did in the spirit realm than what had happened in all three and a half years of Christ's ministry because his ministry in that realm was more in the natural. It was natural healing. It was feeding people naturally. But oh my, when he came up out of the grave, everything shifted into the spirit. I believe that what God is doing in this hour is he is speaking resurrection now over so many men and women that have been hidden, been lonely, have wondered, God, am I done? And the Lord is saying, no, I didn't bury you. I planted you. And anything that's planted is coming back up out of the ground. And so I want to encourage you today that maybe that, that God will give you the understanding wherever you are right now. And you're saying, Lord, am I invisible? Do you know where I'm at? And God's saying, yes. I put angels down there and they're watching over you because I'm getting ready to bring you up out into a realm of resurrection anointing. And the purpose that God has for you is going to come forth. You stay strong. You trust God. Don't let the enemy discourage you because there is a, an awakening, hallelujah, hitting the body of Christ, and we are being resurrected for the glory of the Lord. Well, God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org.